I'm um, Ursula. I'm mum to Eva. Eva's uh, five years old. She has a rare genetic disease called SCN2A. So Eva had seizures um, from day dot, from the day she was born, and they've continued through to, to where we're at now. And Leah started having uh, seizures around about eight hours old. Um, my understanding is that everyone, every human being has the capability to have a seizure any given time, but your body produces these enzymes to, to suppress them. So when you think about it that way, your body's not doing that job to stop them. You know, they, they run rampant and that's what happened with her many times. So we'd go through some nice periods where she wouldn't have any. Um, and then bang, she'd have one and there'd be an ambulance call in ICU, you know, a week. Yeah, it would always end up being a week round trip before we got home. SCN2A is the sodium channel that sends the wavelengths from your brain to the rest of your body. So if your brain is saying lift your hand, your hand should lift. Um, what's happening is that isn't working. Basically Eva's brain produces too much sodium which causes her to have seizures. Uh, she also has a movement disorder. Uh, she has cortical vision impairment and intellectual disability due to the genetic condition. Jasper at about six months of age uh, developed a bit of a head bop where he'd uh, flop his head forward. Then as he got older it started getting into the full top half of his body would um, would flop forward. Um, so we, when we first received Delia's diagnosis of, of um, SCN2A, our neurologist called us on a Friday night. We learnt fairly quickly that there wasn't much information at the time. And the next thing he said was, by the end of the weekend, you'll know more about SCN2A than I do. So that's how new and rare this is. So at about 10 months, we uh, approached our local GP. She didn't see anything wrong at that stage, but we pushed and um, got her to refer us to a paediatrician. She diagnosed him at that point with uh, global developmental delay. Um, so Jasper is our middle child. He's the only one of our children diagnosed with SCN2A. Jasper had to wait six months for that diagnosis. So he was having uncontrolled seizures every day for six months and has six months worth of brain damage. When we first came home from hospital when she was a baby, we were on 11 different medications. It would take us two hours to prepare her medication and she was having it two to three times a day. I had a really good job prior to having a Leah and I was the plan was I'd go back to work after six months. Um, that wasn't going to be the case. And I learned after about six months that I would have to um, give up my job, which was really hard. Nick actually had to quit his job and become Jasper's full-time carer because he needs full-time care, which meant our income took a huge hit. So initially, um, Eva's condition was very isolating. It's, it's very hard to do something as simple as going food shopping when your child's having seizures every 20 minutes. I actually run a property management business and I continued to run it the entire way through, which was really, really hard. Jasper's diagnosis has affected our other children positively and negatively. Um, Jamie, our oldest, probably has been affected the most. He became incredibly afraid of the dark because he thought monsters came and took his brother away and hurt his brother. Because I was yeah, uh, Leah's main carer, I felt like Job didn't really get the attention that he deserved. So it's something that I do, I still struggle with today is that I feel like for you know two years of his life that I wasn't really present definitely affected my life. I mean, I, I'm, I'm now a single mum. I've been a single mum to Eva since she was two. So yeah, I've been doing it on my own, which is, which has been challenging, but also rewarding. Uh, we've been really lucky to connect with a lot of families in the SCN2A family. SCN2A Australia has actually done a lot for us and it's, it's beautiful to meet other families and meet their kids and talk to the parents and, and see where they're at with their children. And a lot of them, have very similar stories um, and it's nice to share them and share them with families that actually get it.
Uh, so we're really grateful for SCN to to Australia and the support that they've provided to us. Um, SCN to Australia have always included us, even though Elia has passed away. I feel like she still had an impact on all of us. And um, yeah, as I said, I feel really grateful that that's that that's the case. I think the thing that is missed in all of this is. Everyone talks about SCN2A and they talk about SCN3A and all the rare conditions, but they don't understand that these are children and these children have thoughts and feelings and they are going through something and you can't just look at it as a disease, you need to actually see the child still. You just hope that they they hurry up and, and find a, a resolution or a cure for, for things like genetic diseases. It feels inevitable that they'll get there. Um, with modern medicine, it's just a matter of how long and how quickly. And, uh, you know, it's become clear to us that um, of, from visiting the Flory team and the researchers there, that it, it just comes down to money and, and the amount of grants they can put towards particular um, theories and research. So, I mean, yeah, the, the hope is that one day they, they've spent enough time and had enough money to, to make a, a major breakthrough and, and work out how to, you know, to just solve some of these problems and give someone some quality of life that they would otherwise never have had.